question is from Mo Daywood. What are your thoughts on mini bulks and mini cuts? I, I think I think we were the first people to talk about. It. <laughs> I did. I love it. I feel like we came up. With that I love that too. we're getting questions on things that we I feel like introduced uh, or you know to the space or at least talked about them in this way. So. Mini bulk and, and I'm sure. Okay, careful. I'm sure somebody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Careful. Yeah. No it's one's always, saying. I'm not going to claim we invented anything no. because yeah. there's fucking somebody did this before us. It's like sure. It's not that at all. I sure. Think, but I there wasn't a lot of people talking about uh, this the traditional way in this in our space to bulk and to cut is you have winter time and you bulk. You put on all whatever weight and you add calories like crazy and it's and you focus on bulking for months at a time mm -hmm. and then the cut is, you know, months also getting ready for that and it's just, you know, when you think about uh, the the most effective way to do things, this is not the most effective way to well, do, it, although we've been doing it for years. Well, like when you're lifting weights and you're doing it properly and you're eating in a excess of calories so that you can build Initially, in that process, a lot of those calories goes to muscle. But the, the longer you stay in a calorie surplus, especially if it's a big surplus, the less of those calories go to muscle and the more of it go to body fat. Okay. Now, when you're cutting, that meaning you're eating less calories than you're burning and you're training in a way to burn body fat, initially, a lot of the weight loss that you start to see besides water starts to become is body fat. But if you stick to that for a long time, your body starts to try to adapt by sometimes reducing muscle mass. And so this is why you'll find people on long diets who, who lose 10 pounds or 15 pounds and find that half or more of the weight that they lost uh, went to muscle. So one of the ways that you can kind of maximize the benefits and the effects of, of bulking and cutting and minimize the potential negatives of bulking and cutting is to do it for a shorter period of time. So a mini bulk is like three weeks long, three, four weeks. So for three, four weeks, I'm eating in a surplus and I'm lifting weights to build muscle. A mini cut, same thing, three to four weeks. I'm eating in a deficit um, and I'm training in a way to, to to burn body fat or to preserve muscle. Now, what if you just want to cut? What if you're like, I want to cut a lot. Like, what do I do after the short cut? Here's what you do. Let's say you did your mini cut and it was four weeks long. After that four-week period, do a week or two of maybe maintenance calories or maybe a slight, a very, very small surplus for a week, a week or two max. Then go back on the cut. So it would look like a four, four week on, one week off, four week on, two week off type of a, a schedule. And what you'll find when you do this is you minimize those negative effects. You minimize the metabolic adaptation, the muscle loss, you maximize the fat burning, or in the case of bulking, it's more lean mass and not just you know dirty weight. It's very similar to the training volume philosophy that we Ooh, have. Dirty weight. You're, you're doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. You're applying that nutritionally here. Right. I mean, does that mean you can't cut for six weeks or eight weeks? Of course not. You could absolutely do that. Yeah. But to, to maximize it, we want to do as little as we possibly can to elicit the most amount of change. And you've you got to understand that your body, just like it adapts to exercise, it gets adapted to whatever you're consuming and eating on a regular basis. So, you know, running in a surplus for a little while and then changing it up is one of the best things that you can do. And what we're trying to do is, and this is where the individual variance is, is, you know, is the, is the peak time for that person two weeks or four weeks or is it five weeks or three weeks i don't you know i don't know that depends on each person individually it's going to fall somewhere though between like the two and six week range yeah. i mean that's going to be ideal once after that the results are and if you're a competitor or if you've ever competed you know this this is the one of the number one mistakes i saw people competing is they would go on these like 12 week cuts and boy, they were miserable for like the last four to five weeks. And the reason why they were miserable is because their body had adapted to that low calorie intake and that excessive amount of our, uh, cardio so well that they were starting to see very minimal change. And they had to cut real low at that point. Yes. Yeah. And so it just gets so extreme where, again, yeah. you want to... And, and psychologically speaking, um, I think it's better too. Oh, yeah, Staying bulk. on a bulk constantly or a cut constantly... Um, it starts to get tiresome. It starts to get really, really difficult. Um, you know, breaking it up with a week of, you know, going in maybe slightly the opposite direction, besides being probably good for you physiologically, is good for you psychologically. So you don't end up, you know, 12 weeks in a cut and then you come out of it and you're like, I'm free. Mm -hmm. And then you binge in the opposite direction.